Hey, it's Steve with Earth to Space Science. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the press briefing that SpaceX had yesterday that introduced their new BFR rocket and also the uh, Japanese billionaire who will be the first person to fly around the moon on it and, and is also really helping to help fund the development of the rocket itself. So anyway, let's take a look at some of the changes to the BFR rocket from what we learned yesterday compared to what we had learned back in 2017. So one noticeable difference is that the height of the BFR is taller now. Uh, the total rocket height that includes the booster plus the actual spaceship itself is now 118 meters up from 106 meters in the design that we saw back in 2017. Uh, and that does have a little bit of importance. Uh, well, it has an impact on the total payload volume and such, but we'll talk about that later. But uh, that does now officially make it taller than the Saturn V, whereas previously the BFR was a little bit under the Saturn V height, so that would make it the tallest rocket that uh, we've ever launched. And so that would be notable in and of itself. It's also, it also makes the, uh, the, the BFR taller than any of the SLS uh, configurations that are currently scheduled to go up uh, during the, uh, the coming years based on what uh, NASA has released so far. So, um, so that is notable there, a little bit taller. Uh, diameter is the same um, in terms of how that change in height is kind of divvied up. Uh, previously, the first stage was 58 meters tall and now it's up to 63. So they've added five meters to the first stage. Uh, and the second stage has gone from 48 to 55 meters. Uh, so they've actually added a little bit more to the second stage versus what they've actually added to the booster itself. Now, in terms of the engines, there's still 31 um, sea level optimized Raptor engines on the, uh, the actual booster itself. However, there have been some big changes to the, the actual ship portion. Um, previously, we, they had uh, mentioned that there would be four vacuum optimized Raptor engines and two sea level optimized engines, uh, which would basically be used for landing. And now they're going to go to having seven sea level optimized Raptor engines. So basically the same engines that are on the booster they're going to have on the actual ship itself. Because the sea level engines don't perform as well in a vacuum, they've gone from basically having six total engines to now having seven total engines. In practice, they'd be using four, the four vacuum optimized engines in space, and, and only the two sea level engines would be used uh, you know, for landing and, and perhaps taking off, uh, like on Mars or that kind of thing. Uh, but now they'll have seven, so they'll be less efficient, but they'll have an extra engine, so that will help to kind of compensate for, the, uh, for that change there. But it does help them uh, keep the same engine across both the ship and the booster, which will help uh, with cost savings and help to make things more interchangeable. And it, it, there's less parts to develop and less parts to maintain in terms of um, you know, the whole development and engineering process. So that will help uh, with the cost there. Um, now, a couple interesting things on the payload volume and, and the payload uh, weight it can carry. Because the overall ship is now bigger, it does have a larger payload volume. So the payload volume has gone from 825 cubic meters to 1,000 cubic meters. So that's a pretty good increase in terms of uh, overall volume. Uh, that means you're gonna have more space if you're you know, in a passenger configuration, there'll be more space per person, um, more space for a lot of the, uh, you know, things like food and water that you're carrying along. Um, having the extra volume in this uh, new BFR design might be more important in a lot of cases than having a higher lift capacity. And that's actually gone down. The overall uh, to low Earth orbit, they've gone from having 130,000 kilogram lift capacity to only 100,000 in fully re reusable configuration, which theoretically will be the only way that it'll fly. And of course, uh, because they can refuel it, or at least that's the plan, that means that that will be the same amount they could take to the moon or Mars or, or wherever. Um, in terms of the fuel capacity, as far as I know, that is unchanged. Uh, so 240,000 kilograms of methane, 200, or 860,000 kilograms of liquid oxygen in the second stage. Now, uh, one thing that's interesting, because the lift capacity of the rocket is now less, uh, to totally, ref to totally uh, refuel the upper stage, if you were to basically just divide the lift capacity into uh, what the capacity is in terms of how much fuel it carries, you'd be looking at now around 11 refueling flights versus eight in the previous configuration. Now, of course, uh, in a you know, in a sort of like tanker mode, the overall capacity is probably gonna be a little bit different than what it would be in a sort of standard configuration for passengers. So in practice, you probably wouldn't actually need that many. And, and also in reality, if you're flying to the moon or Mars, you're not gonna actually need to completely fill the, uh, the, the BFR uh, second stage. And so that, you know, in practice, you might only need a few, it really will just depend on how much weight you have. And so in a lot of configurations, in terms of what you're carrying, you may only need, 
you know, two or three refueling flights to kind of get enough fuel to, to fly, you know, to say to the moon and back with whatever cargo you're carrying. So in reality, uh, you're not going to actually need to have, a, you know, a full tank in a second stage. But, but nonetheless, uh, having a lower lift capacity, that means uh, theoretically you're going to need to have more refueling flights to top off the actual uh, BFR spaceship portion. Now, in terms of how this stacks up, again, compared to other rockets, uh, I pulled this graphic from their 2017 presentation. I kind of just added on the new BFR design there on the right-hand side. Again, it does have a le uh, lower overall weight capacity than the Saturn V, and of course, in the previous iteration of the BFR. Um, and, and so that is a, a small change there. But in terms of the height, again, now it's the uh, tallest rocket of those. Um, the SLS is not on there, but uh, uh, those obviously are going to be fairly similar in size in terms of height to the, uh, the old BFR design, perhaps a little bit higher than that. And, and uh, the new BFR design would theoretically be slightly higher than some of the, uh, the, the, the configurations with the, with the uh, SLS that is coming up here. So, so overall, again, the BFR uh, still a very, very large rocket, uh, still having the, uh, the largest uh, volume capacity and uh, one of the, the overall highest uh, weight capacities in terms of sending payload to lo uh, low Earth orbit. Now the Saturn V, while it had a higher low Earth orbit payload capacity, of course, because it couldn't refuel, it couldn't carry that same amount to, say, the moon. So the BFR, because it can refuel, in theory, uh, the way it's designed, it'll be able to carry far more weight to the moon than the Saturn V ever was, just because it'll have that ability to refuel in low Earth orbit. So really, all you have to be able to do with the BFR is get it into orbit, and then you can refuel and then go to wherever you need to go uh, past that point. And so that does allow you to have a much higher total capacity to your final destination than what the Saturn V had uh, to anything beyond low Earth orbit. And, and the main question that I've really still had about the, the, uh, the BFR and, and the spaceship is exactly uh, how the crew safety will work out uh, with that configuration. So in general, you know, with the uh, SLS and with the BFR and with the, the, crew, the crew Dragon, with the, uh, the Falcon 9, the crew is located on the top of the rocket, which in theory is the safest location on a rocket if you're going to be launching because you can then essentially eject the crew uh, capsule and then get away from the explosion that might be happening underneath you. And so that's usually the safest configuration. SpaceX has again shown the capability with the Crew Dragon, with the Super Draco engines, that it can, uh, it can, it can launch away from an explosion underneath it and the rate of acceleration with the Crew Dragon capsule is going to essentially outrun the actual explosion shock wave, uh, you know, with, with its acceleration capabilities. Now, the only option that looks like there would be with, with the BFS is to uh, actually ignite the Raptor engines that are located there. Because in the BFS, the crew is actually attached to a second stage, the crew cabin portion, um, from what it appears to be at least, um, it would seem that if you were to have an abort scenario, you would have to basically take the entire second stage, the whole ship, and, and try to launch that off of the lower stage. And so that's really questionable because with that amount of weight of the actual crew cabin portion and the, you know, all the fuel that you have, over a million kilograms of fuel or fuel and oxygen combined, uh, you know, that's a huge amount of weight. And so the idea of being able to just fire the Raptor engines on that and have it accelerate away from the booster section, you know, during an emergency, uh, seems like it would, be, it would be pretty hard to do considering, you know, the, the amount of weight you'd have to move in that short amount of time. So anyway, yeah, some interesting changes there to the BFR rocket design. It'll be inter interesting to watch how that evolves going forward. It won't see anything major, but, you know, you can still see changes to the engines or, or changes to, uh, you know, the details of how the... The, uh, the wing type structures are, are, are done and maybe they'll, they'll have a new landing configuration as well in terms of going back to legs or, or fold out legs or something like that versus using the wings for landing. You know, that could all still change. But uh, overall, it looks like they're getting closer to a final design there. And uh, they're still planning to start some test hops in 2019, so coming up next year. And then, uh, you know, maybe a couple years down the road, some actual orbital tests in 2020 or 2021 uh, before they're this planned lunar orbit in 2023. Elon has this history of kind of, uh, you know, providing optimistic timelines, so we'll see how that progresses. And uh, there's some reasonable odds that it's going to get delayed from what it currently is. Um, unlike Mars, there's no real time constraint to going to the moon. You can pretty much go anytime you want. 
going to Mars, you have a you have a launch window every two years that opens up where your planets are aligned at a closer distance, and you're not having to travel as long, you know, time wise to get there. So, so the moon is there all the time in terms of being about the same distance. So there's no real concern there, but uh, but certainly, uh, and we'll see how that progresses. It'll be fun to watch how. The, the tests go during the next couple of years. Obviously, a very exciting large rocket to see. We're going to be having the Blue Origin rockets, uh, the new Glens uh, coming online potentially in a couple of years as well. And so there'll be uh, some interesting uh, rockets coming up here around the 2020 and, and early 2020s time period uh, from, you know, with the, the SpaceX rockets, the SLS will be uh, potentially launching at that point. And uh, all the, uh, the Blue Origin large rockets will potentially be launching as well. So we're going to have some uh, potentially a, a, a period of time coming up here in a few years, we're going to have a lot of very large rockets launching um, with some type of rapidity. So, uh, yeah, exciting times in the space industry, and uh, it's fun to keep along with this. So anyway, that's just a quick look at the BFR rocket changes over the past year, and thanks for watching. Bye.